thank you so much for joining us. I'm just gonna give you a little brief introduction on AIM, the webinar series and the content today, and then we'll dive right into all the fun stuff. Um, so at AIM, we're in the business of providing transportation solutions, be it in the form of leased equipment, dedicated contract carriage, maintenance programs, freight brokerage, the list goes on and on. We do it all when it comes to transportation. Um, but we support our customers beyond our service offerings. Uh, we operate our own fleet of vehicles, so we know exactly what you're up against. We actually currently maintain over 11,000 vehicles nationwide. And of those 11,000, 400 of them are in our integrated fleet. We also employ the drivers that operate them. So um, like many of you fleet owners out there, we are facing all of the same situations. Um, we share a lot of the same struggles. And as our customers um, have supported us, we want to support them. And we want to share our resources and the knowledge of our internal experts and the companies we've partnered with, such as Bendix, who's on the line today um, hosting this session. So that's really why we have the monthly webinar series. We have actually about 10 a year. We don't make it every month, but we try. So we, I see a lot of familiar faces and names out there. And you know, hopefully you'll, you guys will continue to join us and follow us for these sessions because they're really designed for fleet operators and people facing the kind of struggles that you guys are all facing. So we're happy to share our information. Um, with that being said today, we're here to talk about a safety solution we've implemented in our own integrated fleet and we've seen great success from. It's a collision avoidance system and it's brought to us by the good folks at Bendix. Um, we're gonna have Matt Calloway, who's with Bendix, talk to us a little bit about the systems that they provide. And then we're gonna have AIM's Vice President of Safety, Mr. Ron Bork here, to talk to us about how the system has worked in actuality for AIM. Um, so we're implementing it in all of our new integrated trucks. So we're really excited about it. With that being said, I'm going to pass the mic over to Matt Calloway with Bendix. Matt, thank you for joining us. And we're, when you're ready, the floor is yours. Uh, Bendix Commercial Vehicle Systems is part of the Kenora Brimza Group. Um, we design, develop, and supply leading edge safety systems. Um, we, we also supply our uh, wheel in foundation brakes as far as air disc brake, foundation drum brakes, full range of charging and air dryers, and um, also um, supplying to the, the medium and, and heavy duty. Um, markets. So the agenda for today, we're going to talk about the safety overview and why you, you want to spec these, these technologies or take a look at these technologies. Um, we're also going to talk about our ESP, which is um, Electronic Stability Program, and our Wingman Fusion technology that has our enhanced feature sets. We're going to talk about blind spotter, active steering, um, Safety Direct, and then we're gonna wrap it up. So I am I'm Matt Calloway, I'm based out of the Indianapolis area. Um, our, our parent company, um, Knorr Brimza is a German-based company and we are, um, Bendix is, is located in Avon in um, Ohio. We just know, built a new corporate headquarters there. So we used to be in Elyria, Ohio, which is right down the road. So then the first thing we always like to, to start out is the safety share. Um, you know, with Bendix Technologies, it complements the safe um, driving practices of the driver. Um, we're not to the point where we have autonomous vehicles yet. Um, no commercial vehicle safety technology uh, replaces the skilled um, alert driver exercising safe driving techniques and, and proactive comprehensive driver training. That's very important. Uh, a lot of these technologies are, um, are driver assistance technologies and it helps the driver through, um, through the day um, in various driving conditions. Uh, you know, it's the driver's responsibility for the safe operation of the commercial vehicle, system, uh, commer vehicle, commercial vehicle. Um, you know, we always like to talk, the driver is always in control of the vehicle for the safe operation of the vehicle at all times. Um, Bendix advanced uh, driver assistance systems do not replace that need for that. Um, driver assistance is not a driver replacement technology. We always like to hit home on that and make sure that everyone understands that. Um, one of the, the newer um, documents that we have in place is, is challenging scenarios and technology limitations. There are limitations to these technologies 
Um, they continue to advance and they will continue to advance. However, there are driving scenarios that cause cause the system to uh, have different scenario or different uh, limitations. And it's always important. For instance, going around a curve too quickly, um, how that radar sees, uh, the Ford radar sees that road when you're going around the curve. Um, when there are conditions where maybe a vehicle is, um, is not all the way in the lane or off the side of the road. Um, weather conditions are, there are limitations to the system. So we always like to point these out. These are, are also in the driver handbook, but as we all know, drivers typically don't um, read the entire driver handbook as probably do most people. For instance, if you bought a new car, I doubt many of the, the folks out here have really gone through and read the entire um, manual, driver's manual. The goal of a driver assistance technology is to re is the same, um, to help reduce the crashes and the severity of those crashes. If you look at this, this chart, um, this is dated back to 2020. So this number has increased as we all know. Um, you know, fatalities on average are costing almost $12 million with an injury on average accident is 471,000. So the goal is of this technology is to shift that and perhaps it be a, you know, avoid a fatality accident and push it over to maybe a near miss and hopefully a near miss. But sometimes you, you can't uh, mitigate that, that accident all the way. And so you could you know, move it to a property damage. Um, the goal of that technology is to, 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 to mitigate. Mitigate means to reduce the likelihood and the severity of those accidents. Um, you know, crash avoidance has a, a bad misnomer sometimes, and that gives you 100% um, thought of you're avoiding all accidents. Accidents still, can still occur. We're just reducing the likelihood of those and the severity of those. Many of our fleets have reported up to um, 90% reduction in rear end collisions with this technology. And in of those remaining 10%, 90% of the severity has decreased. So um, there are good indicators out there for this technology. And the payback of this technology is the reduction of, of accidents. Um, it is, um, it does have some, some costs associated with the technologies. However, it will, um, it will return, have a return on investment pretty quickly with this technology based upon the statistics out there. The, the first and the foundation of our, our safety systems is the Bendix ESP, and that stands for Electronic Stability Program. This technology adds, adds sensors, um, sensors to the, the overall ABS system that helps us determine, um, basically bring data into the system to help us determine the inputs of the driver. For instance, there's a steering angle sensor that helps us give an indication of how the driver is reacting to the, to the situation. We also have brake demand sensors that allow us to understand how much braking the driver is applying. So these, all this information coming into the system can help us um, mitigate also um, with cr other crashes such as rollovers and jackknives. Uh, a rollover typically occurs on dry, dry pavement, whereas a, um, a, a jackknife typically is an oversteer condition that happens on ice, snow, and rain. Um, it, this system acts in ways that your driver cannot. It acts quicker and it provides action um, with the system. So we can apply the brakes and help mitigate certain uh, situations and apply those brakes in ways that will help mitigate and, and cause, um, cause it a correction in, in the momentum. <clears throat> so the foundation of, of any collision mitigation system is the stability system because drivers are concerned about um, when a driver is put into a situation where there's a collision mitigation braking event, there could be a situation where the driver feels as though it's unsafe. However, it's built upon this ESB 
and the stability system can, which can help mitigate those those uh, loss of um, loss of control situations. Uh, generally, a rollover situation occurs going around a cur curve too quick, and so we feel that lateral movement. The system feels the lateral movement within the system, and we can apply start to apply the brakes and and change the momentum of that potential accident. Now, physics still still exist. The driver can still drive around a, a, and override any systems um, as far as just driving too quick around the corner, uh, around the club relief. Um, the system will provide alerts um, through um, indicator lamps and also through action through the braking system. So the driver, the system provides feedback. And I think it's really important throughout many of the technologies that we have is Yes, we are an active safety system, but we're also providing feedback through the system to change the behavior of the driver as, as the driver drives and accumulates miles on, on, these, on this piece of equipment. So wingman fusion, a little history on wingman, um, on the wingman um, system in general. In 2009, we introduced the first version of wingman. Um, Wingman ACV. ACV brought active crews with braking and it allowed us to have um, adaptive cruise functionality with braking. Um, that was the first rendition of the, of the Wingman product. Then in 2011, shortly, you know, two years later, we introduced the Wingman Advance. This now provided more additional features and we were able to provide um, AEV braking on moving vehicles. In 2015, we introduced the Wingman Fusion line of products that brought a camera and a radar, which is fused with the, the braking. So more information coming into the system allows us to, number one, be, be have a better decision. The system can make a better decision and, and more quickly and make a, a more reliable um, decision and to avoid, help avoid those false positives that many people hear about in the industry. So throughout, um, since that 2015 launch, we have actually um, enhanced some of the feature sets and we've added additional features. And today I'm gonna to be talking about those. Um, the Bendix Wingman Fusion um, enhanced features builds upon the stability system. Um, it is an, an integral um, integration of information between the radar camera and the braking system. Uh, more information you have coming in the system, the more reliable and more quicker you can make those decisions, the system can. Um, if you look at the passenger car business, typically you see multiple, multiple sensors, either radars or camera-based systems because there is that cross-check and you want that cross-check to en enable to uh, reduce the likelihood of false positives. They still exist, they still can occur. However, the fusion system has the lowest amount of false positives in the marketplace. Um, it provides a more complete picture of what is ahead and in the road, what situations are occurring. So more robust mitigation technologies for active braking and the alerts. So let's get into the actual feature sets. These feature sets are, um, if you look at this chart, and I know it's a little, uh, little busy, however, the most recent um, index wingman fusion with enhanced features, which is in the gold, are the current feature sets of the technologies. Um, I talked, I mentioned about the wingman advance, we still sell Wingman Advance, however, with Wingman Fusion being released, there is a higher adoption rate of that Wingman Fusion because now it brings in that camera um, and it's got more capable uh, feature sets. Um, we're gonna talk about these in a little bit more detail, but enhanced autonomous vehicle braking, that's full braking uh, possibility through early and throughout the, the, the situation. Um, it has autonomous emergency braking and stationary vehicle braking. Multi-lane autonomous emergency braking is, is new um, to the fusion suite, suite. Also, highway departure warning and braking is additionally. 
Um, it still has the same feature sets of active cruise and braking, um, ACV full stop and, and, and auto resume functionalities. Um, there are some additional alerts that are offered. Um, these are the original uh, Fusion items. However, they have been uh, tweaked a little bit and in, improved upon overspeed alert and action, lane departure impact, stationary object alerts. We're gonna go through these again in, in detail. Um, it is capable with Safety Direct, and I will mention Safety Direct um, later in the presentation to uh, provide you with uh, what that product is and um, the capabilities of that product. And then lastly, uh, blind spotter. Um, we are, um, with this technology, we are available on four out of the five main OEM, tractor and, tr and truck OEMs. So the only place that the Fusion product is not available is on the Freightliner chassis. There are some differences between the chassis and the feature sets that are released. So um, when consulting um, with, with what features are available, you know, obviously your first resource can be the AIM group. Um, the second resource, you can come directly to Bendix or go through a, a dealer um, if you've uh, selected going through uh, the dealer networks. Uh, but it gets really important on, on what feature sets are available and what option codes are selected because you want to, obviously we don't want an issue where you think you're getting one thing and you're not. So it's very important to have those discussions when you're looking at this technology and looking at placing an order with, with someone. So enhanced autonomous emergency braking and stationary vehicle braking is uh, the, the previous versions of Wingman Fusion were able to um, provide about two thirds of the braking capacity. So with the new versions that we've released over the last year and a half, two years, um, when the fusion system determines that there's a collision that's intimate, it can alert the driver and apply full braking capacity. So now instead of two thirds of the braking capacity, we can now supply 100%. This obviously can take more energy out of a potential accident and, and help avoid those accidents. Um, it, this, this technology is independent of cruise control. Um, it can decelerate the vehicle when encountering a stationary or slower moving vehicle. So this is a, a rear end collisions, predominantly what this system is designed or um, uh, this feature set is designed to, to help with. There, as I mentioned before, there are limitations and many factors affect um, how much warning time and deceleration in general, um, the faster you go and the slower that Ford vehicle is, um, there are limitations to that. And um, there are, I guess, variances of, of what we can take out. Um, refer back to the, the 8107, the challenging scenarios I mentioned earlier, that's a very good detail that can tell you, um, you know, provide that information in a lot more detail. The multi-lane autonomous emergency braking is the new feature of the enhanced feature or fusion. Um, it helps, it can help a driver uh, mitigate both the first and the potential uh, secondary crash. So here's a situation where a driver is, is maybe in the uh, center lane, uh, the driver's coming upon stop traffic, um, was distracted and now the system starts to alert the driver and starts to apply um, collision mitigation braking. Um, the driver um, begins to maneuver into the left lane and the system will uh, provide him with braking throughout that maneuver uh, where the old, the old version of the system would have to re-engage and it could lose precious time. So the camera is used to now identify if there is a stationary vehicle or if there's slow traffic that's in that adjacent, adjacent uh, lane of travel. So this is um, again, new to, uh, and it can help those, those situations where you're coming upon uh, stop traffic. So the fusion system, the driver is always in control. I mentioned that earlier. Um, 
the system believes when the system believes that the driver wants to perform an action, uh, the system will not stop him from that action. So, for instance, if the driver wants to apply more brakes, we'll allow him to apply, apply more brakes. If uh, he has a steering interaction um, or, or additional throttle. But there are some AEB overrides that are in action to, to help with that. So steering angles over 90, per, 90 degrees will cause the system to, a, uh, to suspend the AEB. So we, we see as the system as, or the driver as being under control and he is maneuvering. And now it's, um, you know, it will cause the system to su suspend the AEB. Um, accelerator pedal, so if it's over 90% or there's a 60% change, the system will alert the driver during a collision mitigation braking event. We will continue to apply 1.2 seconds of braking. However, we will release the, the system at that point in time after those two transactions have occurred or two um, interactions have occurred. Um, with the newer technologies, you also have what's called a kickdown switch, and the Wingman Fusion override ignores that kickdown switch, and it provides. Um, um, and there's also no on-off switch uh, like in uh, like in the EU. So in Europe, there's an on-off switch. And many of your passenger cars have features as on-off. Um, the commercial vehicle um, market has chosen not to put on-off switches and really has not allowed the inability to deactivate those safety systems in general. So um, that's one of the differences in, in Europe and versus North America. So highway departure braking, warning and braking, this builds upon lane departure technology and it can alert the driver and if necessary, necessary apply the brakes uh, to reduce vehicle speed if the system identifies that the vehicle has left the roadway. This is to, uh, particularly uh, useful if a driver is, is drowsy and he or she is, is going off the side of the road. Um, in certain circumstances, the system can actually, uh, is capable of reducing vehicle down, uh, speed down to zero. Um, there are different implementations of this technology throughout the, the OEs, and I think it's very important. And if you look at Kenworth, Volvo, I'm sorry, Kenworth, Navistar, and Peterbilt, highway departure warning and braking features are turned on, whereas Volvo and Mac have chosen um, to only alert, um, so there would be no braking with that, that technology on, on the Volvo and, and Mac chassis. So Peterbilt, um, uh, Navistar actually has a higher amount of vehicle reduction that they can take in place. Um, Kenworth and Peterbilt will be catching up with that and their new release later this year will have it down to zero. Um, this is a, a, a good, good technology. Again, it, if it helps with a drowsy driver, um, but it also helps grab the attention and re-engage the driver. With any lane departure technology, uh, we are alerting the driver if there's been a, a lane change without using a turn signal. Uh, that behavior is, uh, is sometimes common in this industry, and we have various technologies that can help with that. Active cruise with braking or auto resume. This is an automatic engage, re-engagement of the cruise control um, with active cruise with braking, as long as the vehicle is, is still above the minimum uh, cruise control speed. So if there's been a situation where the driver um, or the system has, <clears throat> has provided collision mitigation braking and the speed of the, the vehicle is still above, uh, what that minimum OE uh, cruise control is set at, then it will auto engage and reset the cruise control features. Um, if it's below that, the driver has to engage and reset it himself with the cruise control. One of the newest ones, uh, uh, newest feature sets has, is active cruise with braking or stop and driver go. This technology is very similar to um, the, the previous technology, however, it's a low speed approach to adaptive cruise control for traffic situations. So this is typically bumper to bumper traffic 
that maybe comes to a halt. Um, it offers adventure, you know, additional uh, convenience to the driver. It allows the driver to resume the cruise control after braking to a stop by pressing down on the throttle. The vehicle then will reset or accelerate to the vehicle's set speed while maintaining a gap between the Ford vehicle. So this is, uh, again, those situations where a driver may be in an uh, urban environment where there's a lot of traffic and it will, uh, the system will maintain that safe gap in between um, his tractor and the Ford vehicle. The carryover features are in the earlier versions of, of obviously with Infusion. However, they're, they're, they're more, they're a, a lot of the feature sets are the carryover of, of the earlier technologies. So active cruise with braking, that reduces, that helps keep um, a time gap in between the tractor and a Ford vehicle, and it maintains that set falling distance. Falling distance is important when trying to mitigate um, accidents and speed obviously is also. Um, falling distance alerts, this helps provide uh, and help reinforce a safe um, falling distance behavior. Um, if the driver is complaining about the technology and that the system is beeping at them all the time, there's probably a, a, a behavior that they are exhibiting as far as maybe bump, you know, tailgating. Tailgating is generally when they'll get these falling distance alerts that are falling too, too closely and it, it, it helps reinforce that behavior or change the behavior, I should say. Lane departure warning is, uh, is a technology that is looking at the lane markings. And if it's above, if the vehicle's traveling at speeds greater than 37 miles per hour, and if the vehicle has an unintended departure from the lane without using the turn signal, there'll be an active um, rumble strip audio alert and also a visual indicator on the dash that the driver has departed the, um, the uh, lane. If he or she uses a turn signal, then there's not gonna be an audible alert or if the vehicle is going lower than 37 miles per hour. Alert prioritization is is important when you have um, situations where you may have multiple alerts, uh, such as maybe a collision, collision mitigation and braking event, and the driver's maneuvering and making a turn, or not a turn, but a, um, a lane change without using that turn signal. We only want to provide the driver with the most important alert and that would be, in that sort of circumstance, it would be a collision mitigation braking event. Um, if we provide him with numerous alerts through a, a scenario, what will happen is they'll become, um, you know, we don't want to distract that driver during those, those important moments. And lastly is overspeed alert and action. Um, this uses the camera to identify and look at speed signs. Uh, traditional speed signs, and where there is um, a speed limit number and typically a speed um, uh, speed limit that's that's written. Um, if the system identifies that um, that sign or sees a sign and the vehicle is going over 25 miles per hour, the um, the system will look at the sign and it will compare it to the vehicle speed. If the driver is going five miles over the posted speed limit. Um, the driver will receive an alert once he or she passes that sign. It doesn't continue to alert the driver. However, it does provide a driver with a quick alert saying, hey, you're, you're speeding and here's what the speed limit is. It's all displayed on the driver or on the, on the dash. If the vehicle speed is going 10 miles or comparison to the speed sign is going 10 miles over that, Fusion can alert and we will offer one, de one second de-throttle if the driver is on the throttle as opposed to in, in cruise control. If he or she is in cruise control, then it's only gonna provide the alert. We're not gonna kick the driver out of, of cruise control by de-throttling the, the vehicle for one, for one second. 
Um, some of these interactions can be perceived as a breaking event. This is not a breaking event. We only do throttle. And that's, safe, that's important to, to notate because perceptions of some of the drivers in these situations, um, they can be perceived as, as a braking event and it's really just a throttling. <clears throat> Things to keep in mind with the technology. I mentioned it earlier, the driver's always in control of the vehicle and responsible for the safe operation. Drive normally and safely. Um, if the driver tries to, to make the system work, there's more likelihood that the system could, or the, the, the driver could get into a situation where he or she is, is pushing the system and, and, and trying to see the limits of the system. And we don't want that. We want the driver to drive normally. Most drivers, when they're driving this equipment, um, they don't have a lot of interactions. And if they are having interactions, that's telling, that should tell you that um, there's some behavior that needs to be changed or modified. Um, so the, the system, again, I talked about it earlier, it's an active safety system, but it also um, can bring, bring to the top those behaviors that need to be changed. And it can and allow for you know, the coaching moments. The system does not react to non-metallic objects or animals. So a deer that runs out in front of the vehicle, um, unfortunately, the system is not going to detect that, and the system would not provide um, you know, any type of active braking for that situation. Uh, driver tampering is one thing that we all experience with this technology. Um, you know, we've seen various things over the years. Um, if the camera gets blocked, it reverts back to the older technology of Wingman Advanced features. And so it limits the, the feature sets that are available and it has less, um, we can take out less energy uh, with those earlier feature sets. Now, if the radar is blocked, the camera functionality is still available, but there's no collision mitigation. So you would have lane, lane departure warnings, the speed sign recognition, but you would not have uh, collision mitigation. Um, if there is a problem with the system, it will allow, it will provide an alert to the driver and um, in order to, to get that vehicle into a service facility to, to have it taken a look at. Um, again, tampering does, uh, does occur. However, there are what I call breadcrumbs. There are um, features within the ACOM software that we can look, take a look at and you can look at those and obviously, if a driver comes into your facility with, you know, something over the, the radar, um, you know, you probably need to have that conversation with, with that driver about tampering. The worst thing a driver can do is, is tamper with a safety system and then have an accident. I don't know how you would explain that to, to, um, to uh, you know, law enforcement, but it would be a difficult situation. Um, Wingman Fusion is retrofitable. Um, so if anyone is it is interested there is a situation there is a a, um, a higher cost for a retrofitable option however it can be an option that can help uh, in certain circumstances um, I, I think lastly it, it's very important as i mentioned earlier some of the oes are have released different versions or variants to the technology. So it's really important to have those conversations with, with AIM or, or with myself or with, with a dealer group to understand uh, what feature that you would be purchasing today. Next item is the Bendix Wingman, or I'm sorry, the Bendix Blind Spotter with the CAN connectivity. This technology is um, very similar to your passenger car where it has a blind spot um, warning and what the blind spot warning or how the system operates is there's a side radar. The side radar is, is typically mounted in the fairing. If you do not have fairings, it's mounted to, um, to the chassis somewhere. And then there's a driver um, ODU, which is an operator display unit. And it's typically in line with the A-pillar and the actual uh, passenger side driver's mirror. Um, so the, the radar is looking out laterally 
and um, it, it looks for metallic objects. If there's a metallic object that is detected, it changes from an amber to a, a red, and then there is a tone if the driver uses a turn signal. Um, we mentioned the CAN capability or the connection that allows for um, really a full benefits of the new technology that we have. The original blind spotter had limitations and it, it produced, or I guess it provide alerts at a, uh, basically the range change when we enhance the with a CAN. So we now have up to 150 degrees of view and up to 40 feet, so 20 feet in front of where that sensor is, is actually mounted and 20 feet behind that sensor. So now we can start to protect, um, you know, the front bumper of the tractor to see if, um, if there's any vehicles that are coming in on the, the tractor or if there is a, a, in the trailer area. Um, it, it goes out 10 feet. And then we have two different modes. Um, the high-speed mode filters out stationary objects, uh, stationary metallic objects like guardrails and, and minimizes those false positives. Um, at slower speeds in parking lots, um, it narrows the radar range with no filters or stationary targets. So obviously this can help if you're maneuvering through a parking lot and the vehicle, um, you see a ballard out or, or a concrete uh, fixture, you could, uh, the system would alert the driver um, instead of hitting that yellow deer out in the parking lot, right? So um, it also integrates with the, the Wingman Fusion and its audio alerts. Our newest feature or our newest product to market is the Bendix Active Steering. And, and this is a, a in 2000, night, I'm sorry, 2020, we purchased RH um, Shepherd, which has um, steering, steering products. This now allows us to offer um, driver comfort, basically assist the driver uh, to create a safe, more comfortable driving experience by using, by adding lane keep assist. And there's also additional features. Um, if you look at, at side swipe accidents, they're they're typically number two on the frequency level with 33.5% of the crashes um, resulting in property damage caused by a side swipe. 48% um, um, of fatalities, fatal crashes were in two-way undivided tra traffic flows. And then 28.1% of fatal crashes occurs at angles. And in, in the whole goal with lane keep assist is very similar to what you have. Newer passenger cars have lane keep assist or they'll have lane centering. So many of the technologies that you see in your passenger car are now available or have been available for, um, for the commercial vehicles. And that's real, very important to understand. And typically the automotive is generally five to seven years um, sooner with technology releases. Um, Lane Keep Assist has been around for a little bit. However, um, we brought it to market fairly quickly and uh, we see the large benefits for, um, for Lane Keep Assist. Uh, Lane Keep, Keep Assist, how it works is it provides general uh, steering uh, corrections to help guide the vehicle back into, back into the current level or lane of travel. So this is looking at the, the cameras used to look at the lane markings again. And if the driver is not using the turn signal, it will gently correct the vehicle to go back into the center of the lane. Um, so that's a, a unique feature to the active steering. And we also have three different, also what I call uh, driver comfort. So we have speed dependent steering assist, active return to center, and then uh, road, road disturbance compensation. I think those last three are more driver comfort. However, they do have a, a, a safety uh, features and, and the benefits. So lane keep assist is, it, 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 builds upon that lane departure warning. So we use the so, same 37 miles per hour. We also look, are looking at the, the turn signal to 
to help provide if the driver is is actually making a maneuver or if it if he or she is is going across lane marking um, without using that turn signal. That's very important. We see that behavior uh, in in lane keep assist helps modify that. Now, some drivers, I can tell you on my passenger car or my wife's passenger car, sometimes I don't like this, this feature. However, there's no, um, no way to temporarily disable my, the system. However, with ours, we can, with the Vendix system, we can. We can disable it, lane keep assist for up to 15 minutes. This is very similar to the lane departure warning disable switch. Um, if there's lane markings that are not visible, then the system will, um, will display that within the actual driver display. The driver must keep or his uh, hands on the wheel and cannot override at any time. One of the, the benefits of this technology is there are two different settings of the technology. So there's basically um, an aggressive and then there's a, a toned down um, feature of this. Um, a lot of complaints in the industry are, well, it feels like I'm being bounced back and forth between the lines. Well, with this, uh, with the additional able to customize those, uh, you have less of that and it's a gentle nudge that goes back into it. Um, the next feature is the speed dependent steering. This is at higher speeds when cruise control, it has a firmer feel to it, helps maintain that steady position. At lower speeds, city driving or maneuvering, there's less of a steering effort. You can actually steer it with, with one finger. So the driver has a lot of benefits to reducing the fatigue and, and helping in those situations. Again, I mentioned about the two selectable steering profiles. Um, that's how you actually change uh, to, from a firm or um, from a uh, a higher aggressive to a lower aggressiveness on, on the profile. Um, it, help, it, it works in both reverse and in forward. The next active return to center is, is usually used in, in maneuvering, yard maneuvering or steering at, at low speeds. Um, it, it, if you release the steering wheel, it will return back to center. So very easy on and doing these uh, low speed turning events helps maneuver in the tight places. This is a very important with you know city city driving and, and yard maneuvering. Road disturbance compensation, as we know, our, our roads are getting uh, more and more potholes, and and it, it seems like the, the, this winter has been very very bad. Um, what this uh, technology will allow, this, it will lessen the steering wheel vibration. Um, and it's looking for those road disturbances. It isolates most of the, those vibrations, which obviously helps reduce the driver muscle strain and the fatigue. Um, this, again, I feel as though this, this does have safety um, uh, benefits. However, it does help with the driver, um, the driver comfort and drivers like this technology um, for the most part. There are some features that they don't like, um, but they become accustomed to the technology fairly quickly. Lastly is our Safety Direct. Um, safety Direct is data and video um, recording. Um, this is um, very important when you're trying to increase your safety um, and it helps with the, the training of your drivers. You, know, you, you have event data and, and video that can tell you what's going on, what's occurring, what behaviors are occurring within your, your fleet and your operations. Um, so this technology is a subscription-based uh, technology that, that doesn't really take any additional um, 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 hardware. So it uses the current hardware that's on the equipment. Now there are upgrades that you can do, and I'll talk about those momentarily. Um, we wirelessly transmit the video and the data to, back to the back office. Um, it is your data. Um, you manage that data. Um, we don't have a third party that's looking at that data in making an interpretation. What, what, you, what you've told them or what they interpret is important to you. It's really what you interpret, but it doesn't take a lot of monitoring. It's really bringing those 
uh, exceptions up to the top so that you can look at what um, what safety features and benefits that you can put in place to help change the behaviors of those drivers who are the exceptions. Um, the integrates with the fusion and the ESP and the, and the brake the ECUs. That's a very important because interpreting data sometimes gives you a different um, analysis as opposed to having the actual data coming from um, the Bendix ECUs. Um, it makes it more accurate and more actionable. Um, and it's better managed fleets, maintenance. It can provide with uh, maintenance um, reporting as far as maybe if you're having issues with, with cameras or if you're having tampering issues, if a driver is tampering or a group of drivers are tampering, it can provide you with those, those reports to help address those situations. So it, I mentioned earlier, it uses the existing hardware. So it's using the, the camera. Um, the, we actually have a processor on board um, that helps take that data and uh, wirelessly transmit it back to, um, back to base and through the web portal that we have. So it's, um, it is upgradable. So today's technology, the fifth generation the safety direct processor, we have a base in the full version. Uh, the base is, is limited in its feature sets. Um, however, you know, the full offers additional features. Um, so as far as in, um, internal backup recording, so battery backup, this is important if there is a, a, a tragic event and the power to the vehicle is cut, um, maybe a horrific accident. What typically, what e what the cameras and the ECUs typically do is it's a writing, they're writing over the memory. And sometimes if their the power is cut, you don't have that, um, that data cannot be written to the actual ECU. So this helps with that situation. You also have a DVR technology. So you're now recording um, uh, constantly. It does write over eventually but it, um, it helps with those situations where uh, maybe a tractor is parked out in the, out in the, um, in, you wanna understand what happened in, a, in the parking lot. Maybe the driver, uh, you can go back and take a look and see if you know, maybe there was a backing accident that someone backed into your tractor. So it helps with those situations. We also have a driver facing camera. Um, the acceptance levels of driver facing cameras are, are uh, increasing. However, that is sometimes a difficult challenge within your fleet. And there's situations where um, a driver facing camera can tell you a lot of what's going on. And if there's a distracted driver or if there's a behavior that's occurring. Um, again, a driver pushback is, is pretty high with driver facing camera. We also have a high resolution um, um, roadside camera, and we have the ability to offload uh, videos through Wi-Fi app and, and also cellular now. So typically we, we work and uh, work with your telematics and we integrate with those telematics, push the data off the, the tractor or truck, and it goes into the safety portal. So now we have the ability for cellular connection. So. And that is it. Thank you so much for taking it. Uh, I appreciate all the information, Matt. Um, you know, that's all stuff that, that we're taking advantage of today. And I'm going to give you a little look at, at how that looks in our fleet, the way we roll it out, um, and, you know, how, what our driver reception's been. Um, I'll jump right into it. And I, I want to let you all know that I'm going to be as respectful as possible of your time, and, and we'll... Um, we'll come real close to this three o'clock time frame that we committed to. Um, so the Bendix system is a standard part of our spec. It's been in place since 2019, and, and we've been taking the approach of no retrofits. Every new truck that goes on the road is going to have a Bendix system, and of those 400 trucks that we've got on the road, about 30% are currently um, equipped with a Bendix system. We're forecasting, of course, with all the supply chain difficulties, especially in the truck world, we're forecasting to be to about 50% by the end of this year. Um, God willing, we'll make that. 
um, without the supply chain and chip shortage, et cetera, we'd probably exceed that 50% number this year. Um, in terms of how we roll this out, what we do with our drivers to get them ready to take full advantage of the system, um, you know, we're making sure that we get in front of them before they get in the truck. We're making sure that um, they understand and they know what to expect from the truck, that they understand the alerts that they're going to hear and see, and that they don't have any surprises from their safety equipment when they're driving down the road is not the time to learn the system. The time to learn the system is before they get in the truck. So the Bendix training videos, and there's a wealth of uh, information out on YouTube. Anybody that's interested in how this looks for the driver, I'd encourage you to look at those videos. There are some that are specific to whatever manufacturer. And as you've heard from Matt, there's a lot of differences or there are some substantial differences between the manufacturers. So take a look at the videos that are specific to the types of trucks that you operate. Make sure that it's the right decision for you and that you're getting the best safety equipment that you can get. Um, some of the challenging scenarios that, that Matt also referenced, uh, the specific ones that we hear from our drivers are bridges, highway turns, cloverleaf ramps, hills. You know, Matt told me many years ago, uh, and I always remember this, listen to what your drivers say because they're gonna tattle on themselves. And they really do. They come in and they talk about the alerts, this thing's driving me crazy. And then we start to get into what the specific things are and they say, it's going off for no reason. I don't understand. And it's typically that they mis misinterpreted the alert. And they think it's because of um, tailgating. And they weren't tailgating. And, and we look at the alert and it's something different. And they, like Matt mentioned, they think that because the truck de-throttled for one second, they think it's braking for no reason, when really it was because they were speeding. And we validate that with our camera system. It's really a training opportunity. I'm going to show you one of those training opportunities here in a second. I think it's my next slide. Uh, we're going to look at a collision avoidance braking that occurred. Now, this one occurred because of a distracted driver. Um, and this created an opportunity for us. Once we realized that this was collision avoidance braking, then we could um, coach the driver on the Smith system and um, making sure that he's alert at all times. And we'll let this video go. And and I'll give you my thoughts on that. So here's our vehicle and you can see that this is, uh, he's four seconds away and our truck just stopped. Our driver did not apply the brakes in this case. In this case, the driver um, didn't see the car ahead of him and the truck stopped for him. We avoided this collision. Uh, had he seen the, the vehicle one second before that, it would have been a much less harsh braking event. But because of the camera, we were able to identify the situation and relate to the driver what the right thing to do was. So we were lucky to avoid this crash. Um, wrong click. Um, when, when you're using the system, whether you're using Safety Direct or not, and we aren't currently using Safety Direct. It's part of our roadmap for the future. But right now, we're relying on the reporting from our ELD system. Matt mentioned that you're going to get data through your ELD. And this is one of the reports that we got from our ELD. And your ELD might package it differently. But let me explain to you what we're seeing here. So on the left column, all the numbers, you've got some headings here and their GPS speed. ECM speed, forward speed. So that's the speed of a forward vehicle. What the following distance was for our vehicle in seconds, the heading, RPM, and whether or not the driver was using cruise. We do wanna mention that cruise control is one of our driver's favorite features. The cruise control use, um, the drivers have come to really rely on that. We've seen our cruise control use really go up. But um, you can see that this is a second by second look at our drivers, you know, minute here and this this report goes back about two minutes prior to the event and like 30 seconds after the event uh, but again that's going to be dependent on the eld that you use and we use people now so i don't know if you can see it but at 806 and 13 seconds towards the bottom of this column of numbers there's a little box around there it's kind of um kind of dim on my side but you can see that that is the that's the zero time on the chart to the right and at that point, our driver had a following distance of 1.74 seconds. And the setting that we've chosen to generate this report is um, 
a following distance of two seconds or less that's maintained for 10 seconds. If we look at the chart on the right, the green line that has the little spike and then it goes down, that's the following distance in seconds. And you can see that our driver dipped below our standard of two seconds or our minimum for reporting anyway. Um, he dipped below two seconds and it held for one full box in the, in the horizontal direction. So if he, those boxes are 10 seconds wide. So that truck maintained a two second or less following distance for 10 full seconds. And that's what generated this report. And we get these reports and we can compare these to our camera events. And we're a little handicapped right now because we don't have safety direct. So they're not automatically tied together, but we can compare these and create coaching opportunities and um, really give some good feedback to our drivers and see who's using the Smith system and who's not, who's maintaining the space around their vehicle, especially in the forward direction and, and who's not. So we think that by com combining the power of the camera with the power of what Bendix is telling us with this forward vehicle speed and the following distance that we are really going to improve driver habits and behaviors. And it, it's really showing in our average following distances that we're seeing across our fleet. So when we put together the whole puzzle of what, what technologies are there to uh, help our drivers, I wanna encourage you to, to look at all of the pieces. So Bendix is just one piece of the in-cab puzzle. Um, that data, as, I, as we mentioned, is interpreted by the ELD. When you're not using Safety Direct to get Bendix's packaging of the, of the data. Um, so you wanna look at the ELD, how that's packaging the data look at the safety direct system and choose which one's right for you. And you can also mold the system somewhat to fit your needs. We've got a following distance standard in our camera system of four seconds and the ELD came, I'm sorry, the Bendix system came delivered to us at a three and a half second, um, you know, interval. So the adaptive cruise was looking to maintain 3.5 seconds. And, and we looked at bumping that up to four seconds to be cohesive with what we're trying to accomplish with our camera system. So we're making those two pieces work together and we can continue to build coaching events and retain drivers by investing in their safety. This driver that we just saw the video from, he could have been one that we lost had he had that rear end collision, uh, but we were retaining him because he did not have that collision. Now we got an opportunity to improve him and keep an eye on his behavior and help him build new habits, not only to protect us as a company, but to protect him as a driver, to protect his livelihood. And the drivers have really come to accept the system. They're really responsive to the coaching that we offer because it's based in reality. It's based in what they're really doing and it translates to retention. So we're really working to retain a safer driver than we started. Um, some of those triggers that, that Bendix is creating, um, those are all um, also, you know, they're generating reports internally, but your camera system might work off of the Bendix triggers as well and give you a video automatically. So you're going to want to make sure that the whole puzzle fits together. And the last thing I want to mention here is the competing in-cab coaching. Our ELD is creating events and alerting drivers to overspeed events, um, our, or it has the capability to, the Bendix system also is alerting drivers on specific scenarios, as well as some camera systems have audible or visual with lights um, coaching available to them. So you wanna make sure that you're not bombarding your drivers with too many competing coaching events in cab or worse yet, conflicting coaching events. So you wanna make sure that that whole puzzle fits together. And to wrap it up, I just wanna say that, you know, the, the system as it's, laid out by Bendix and the, all the technology that goes into it, it really combines to form a really efficient and effective coaching method. I mean, we don't need to do a lot to make the system work. We have to get the driver going on the right path to start to make sure that he's understanding what the system's saying. But once we get that settled, the system is active. As, as Matt mentioned, it's an active system that's actively working to protect the driver and your resources and your liabilities. So it's really active and it doesn't require a lot of intervention from our safety staff 
on a daily basis. It's really just to get the driver going in the right direction. And once he's rolling, um, the system works to protect your interests. Mm -hmm.